out into the car to hide from my mom to just get some air conditioner because she said no air conditioning, no wind, nothing like that. She kept the house warm. <laughs> so we literally went out to the car. Early on in my career, a physical therapy mentor talked to me. He was saying, your patient doesn't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. As I was looking at the different analytics, I started to go down the rabbit hole of seeing other people in the space. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm against giants. Literally, I'm against giants. So recently I got one where it's like, oh, this is just your head talking to a microphone. It'd be better if you gave me a picture. I was like, I'm sorry, sir. I, I, I will put more pictures next time. <laughs> Your patients don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. This is the quote that Richard Lai shared with us today. You are going to love this podcast. We talked about quotes a lot, and he has many in his pocket. He is a physical therapist and an acupuncturist, but what he is, I think, really, really talented with is he is a great teacher. Like I like to do, he simplifies TCM in a way that is so easy to understand. And his whole platform, Study Acupuncture With Me, is a fantastic way to support students because he's passionate in helping students learning and understanding this medicine that we all love. So today you're going to meet, if you haven't seen him online yet, well, this is your chance to really go and dig a little deeper into Richard's life. I asked him a lot of questions. He was very vulnerable and including how he does it all, which is managing time, which is difficult because he is everywhere and he does a lot. So you'll see this and hopefully it really resonates with you as well. So without further ado, let's do it. Study acupuncture with me. That's not mine. That's Richard. Richard Lai is my guest today, and he's all about study acupuncture with me. That's his brand. That's where you can find him on every social media. That's where I found him on Instagram, on YouTube, and he has a podcast too. That is the same name. So remember this because this is someone I've been wanting to talk to for quite a while. So I'm excited. Welcome, welcome, Monsieur Richard Lai. Thank you. It gives me literally the chills to hear those words come out of your mouth. That's amazing to me. Literally check that off of my bucket list. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you for what you're doing for the community. And we're going to talk about this in a minute. First, I wanted everybody to know a little bit behind this gentleman that I see teaching online with so much passion and you're consistent, you show up and you keep teaching because you can see you have the passion for teaching. You have a physical therapist doctorate, then you went and did your license in acupuncture and you in New Jersey. So you opposite end of me, I'm in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So you're in the East coast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you blow me away because I can see while watching you online that you are such a hard working person. And then I went and dug a little bit, looking a little bit more deeper into you. And I realized when I read that you planned your wedding, got married, prepared for your license and board exam all at the same time and passed the exam within just a few months. So reading this, I'm like, yeah, I could see this person is such a dedicated, hardworking person. You put so much work into what you're passionate about, but at the same time, you don't leave behind your family life, which I know now you have two kids, so you're busy, Papa, which is great. So I want to talk about all this, but I wanted to introduce everybody, obviously, and you have a podcast, like I said, in the introduction, which is Study Acupuncture With Me. I'm really happy you're here before we go and talk about teaching. Uh -huh. I know you also have a little minor in business administration as well, so that's very smart to combine the two. I love that. Uh -huh. How did you go from physical therapy to go, you know what, I'm going to add acupuncture to my knowledge? When I was looking into long-term careers, I knew I wanted to be healthcare because I liked talking to people. I liked working with people. All throughout high school, I did judo. So I saw people get physical therapy. I saw people get chiropractic care, massage therapy, acupuncture as well. I was playing with those four different routes or maybe a medical doctor, et cetera. And I was looking at the time, you know, how long it would take to do each of those things. I respect medical doctors. They 
commit a long time of their life to it. And for me, I didn't want to commit so much time to. I knew I wanted a family long term. I want to build my family life, my last name with my family and have kids. And so that's why I decided to go something more in the front end of healthcare, where I'm in direct patient care with people. So that's either acupuncture, physical therapy, chiropractic care, et cetera. My mentor, my judo teacher, he loved physical therapy, and he's really who sort of recommended me to do it, right? So then I started in physical therapy. From there, I was like, okay, I know I want to be an acupuncturist too, because my mom is deeply rooted. She's not an acupuncturist, but we have certain tongs that we drink in the winter, in the summer, in the spring, or if I'm sick, just through the lineage of just knowing what to do. So I knew I wanted to do that eventually as well. To fulfill that for her, I went into acupuncture as well. I love that. So your family, for people that don't know, is from Taiwan, yes. you were saying before we started. And <laughs> your parents obviously moved to the States and you were born in the States. Because I'm always fascinating to see second generation. I'm not from Canada, same thing, I moved here. Oh. But if second generation would be inclined to want to know the culture and what people did in the culture. Like you said, you were drinking decoction and you were raised to have that background where it's make sure you stay covered in the winter and all those things that comes with the culture. So that's really cool that your parents were really instilling that in you and you didn't push it away. Because I know for some generation, when you're in a new country, you're kind of like, oh, I just want to be part of my peers and my group of friends and I don't want to be different. You're like, I'm going to do this for my mom and I'll do this for me. And this is a good thing for the whole family. So I love that yeah. that you share that. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. She really agrees that my wife is Korean, right? So it's sort of a different culture, but she said, you have to do the one month sit, like so weird. So you have to do that. When my wife was like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to not shower for a month and eat this and eat that, but she did it. And she said that it helped her recover, although a lot of the things made her very hot and stuff like that. We would literally go out into the car to hide from my mom to just get some air conditioner because she said no air conditioning, no wind, nothing like that. And she kept the house warm. <laughs> so we literally went out to the car to hide, to just turn on the air conditioner for a little bit. That's awesome. That's so funny. You know, I come from France and we have a lot of the similar way of postpartum, right? When a woman has had a baby after that, we always say no bath, mm. no washing your hair. You could do shower, but no bath. You're not Don't dipping yourself into this body of water. We always say to stay warm, yeah. warm food, warm teas, no smoking because that's very French. It's interesting because it's very similar. That's why I love that ancient tradition. Yeah still work today. And we see that with TCM every day, obviously. So it's kind of funny when you have a family saying, hey, do this, don't do this. And you're like, okay, but it's really hot yeah. in the house and I need some AC. Yeah. I mean, come on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it was so funny. <laughs> How long have you been practicing TCM? I know physical therapy was longer. At one point, you were doing therapy for the Celtics. Yeah, I had an internship with them when I was in school. That was a great experience. I worked with Leon Poe, Big Baby Davis. That was d during that time when Rajon Rondo was on the team as well. We worked out in Waltham, Massachusetts, where their practice center is. There's an outpatient center there called Pro Sports Therapy, and they are the physical therapists of the Boston Celtics. It's a huge Boston sports club in the front with the pool, ellipticals, weight training, etc. Then there's a physical therapy gym, and then there's a whole locked area, which is where the players play. And then they have their own locker rooms, they have massage tables back there, they have all that stuff back there for them. So it was great. It was a great experience. Well, yeah, yeah, that's great because it's such great experience when you work with all the, the sports team. And another thing, too, it, it's good to see that sports team are integrating a lot of wellness, a lot of recovery that is just not one thing. I mean, it used to be a lot of massage, but now most teams have chiropractors and physical therapists and acupuncturists yeah. and so many modalities to their toolbox. It, it's really good to see. How long have you been practicing acupuncture itself? Five years, six years now. Cool. So I did okay. a little bit of everything. I got to do some hospital work, outpatient mostly, and then home care as well. I still teach at my school that I graduated at, and I also volunteer to do things in the clinic for them as well. Outpatient was where I had my own practice and I worked with a chiropractor. So we were hand in hand. There's long hours, right? With that, you know, um, yeah, we were in there 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, sometimes doing documentation, cleaning up. It was just me and him. And then he had a receptionist that would leave in around eight o'clock or 830. It was a great experience working on one side of the clinic and then him on the other side of the clinic. Do you see 
the benefits of combining physical therapy with acupuncture, because they go really well hand in hand, is your focus or what you're really passionate about helping people with pain in general. I consider myself more of like a medical physical therapist. I work mostly in inpatient, so hospitals, skilled nursing facilities, inpatient rehab, so someone who had a stroke someone who broke their leg, they had a hip replacement, or they had a ORIF, something like that, or they have some mm. sort of infection. I just had a geriatric patient, elderly person. They were found on the floor after who knows how long. It was a, a lot of hours, right? So their creatinine levels are through the roof, right? Their diagnosis coming in is rhabdomyolysis, that build up a protein in the bloodstream, the body, because of the muscle breakdown, because they were on the floor. They couldn't get themselves up off the floor. As a physical therapist, I can see that, help rehabilitate their muscles, get them stronger to sit to stand, transfers, ambulation, those kinds of things. And then as an acupuncturist, take care of also their mental health, take care of their body and their nutrition, take care of their anxieties, really. Because geriatric patients, they have a fear of falling, right? That's one recent clinical example. You have to work the mind and the body. We can't just work one without the yeah. other. And you're right. Most people that are older, there's a fear of falling. But once they fall once and they get hurt, then the fear is even oh, worse. Yeah. Because now it's like, oh, if this happened again, will I be able to continue to walk? Will I need a cane? Will I be in a wheelchair? My mom lived to be 92 wow. and on her own and everything. So like just amazing. But what was interesting is very French woman. She smokes two packs a day for 60 years and still lived in 92 and drank wine. She fell once when she was in her 80s. And after that, every time she would go out for a walk or grocery shopping or whatever, she would always have her umbrella and use it as a cane. And I'm like, why are you taking your umbrella? It's sunny outside. And she would say, well, just as in case I feel like I'm going to lose balance and I might fall. And then I would say, well, okay, let's buy you a cane. And she goes, no, I'm not wearing a they cane. That's for it. old people. Right, right, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, you're 88. I guess you're not old. Yeah. So she took the umbrella that way. It doesn't look as bad. Yes. It's very French too. It looked good, but it was so funny. But yeah, she fell once, didn't break anything. But after that, she was always really cautious and fearful. So I could see that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I love that you're combining both because it is all about mind and body and having the ability to do both is great. I'm not familiar how it is in the U.S. compared to Canada. Can you, in the facility you work, can you do both and do patients have to pay separately? Is it covered by insurance? How does that work? It depends on where I'm working at, right? Some of the places that I go to, it's like a package that I work out with them where it's a certain price in our contract per hour. And so I would see those patients privately. And I can also see them through my physical therapy business. So I would build their Medicare B. And then in addition to that, I would do acupuncture with them as well. I also work with some hospice companies as well. So I go to people's homes. That's mostly my vestibular stuff. But I also do acupuncture with vestibular with them as well. But they're really looking for the physical therapy maneuvers. But I do offer the acupuncture to them as well. Sometimes at no cost, just because I feel like it'll benefit them. Because if they're really anxious, they're living at home alone, they have knee pain as well. I may just do some needles with them or some cupping or something like that too. Because as long as that helps them, honestly, if I'm there, I'm not going to upcharge you while I'm there. And if it's helping you, I'm here already. I have everything with me. Gives you good patient care. I do it. It's so good that you're taking care yes. of the older population because they need so much help because they are living longer. And not everybody is taking care of them. So often they're alone. So even when you go to their house, you're someone that comes to visit to them. It's really uplifting, I think. So yeah. I think that's really good because the old people for me, this is the people that I learn from. Those are the best stories. Yes. They have the best stories. They teach yes. you a lesson. You can learn so much from them. And at the same time, you're providing something that is going to help them, like you said, physically yeah. and emotionally like, yeah. for stress. So. Sometimes I'm literally like so the only person that's... that's seen them for that day, you know, and sometimes they're like, oh, you're going to leave already? No, I've been here for an hour and a half. You don't want any more cookies? No, I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you, though. I have to go see my next patient. <laughs> This is awesome. You're like the grand son. Yeah. So that's your professional life. And then this is still professional, but in a different way, is you started study acupuncture with me and I saw you first on Instagram, then on YouTube, and of course your podcast, which is video. So that's why you transfer that to YouTube and to Instagram. Why did you start it? What was the drive behind studying study acupuncture? Yeah, when I was in physical therapy school, I had a really hard time just keeping up with everything that we had to learn. You're learning how to be an adult. You're learning how to be a person, right? And 
had falling behind in my studies is such a burden to me. And then especially having that burden sort of weigh on my family as well. I just, I'd hated that feeling. And when I went to acupuncture school, similar situation, right? Because like acupuncture school, it's like learning a new language. So you're literally learning a new language. And if you're not familiar with not growing up, knowing watch out for the wind or you have too much heat, if your parents aren't saying that to you all the time, you may not understand like how that could play together. I had a little bit of an upper hand in that. I started study acupuncture with me because while I was learning, it was just so hard to learn. When I was studying with my classmates, I felt like I was explaining it in a way and they were understanding it. When I was in physical therapy school, I wish I had someone like that that could be like, hey, this is what it means. Hey, let's study together and let's figure this out so we can all win and we can go and just pass the test easily and not stress out about it, not lose weight, all that stuff. You want to bring your gift of being able to simplify yeah. the material to the students. That's what you want to do. Yeah, that's literally. <laughs> I totally get yeah, that. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I probably rambled a little bit on that one, but that's exactly what it is. Even when I went into teaching at my school, oh my goodness gracious, like I was like sweating so much every single time, practicing before I went in there, very afraid of someone asking a question. But then I just thought to myself, okay, just go at it with an open heart, just like how you know I'm doing study acupuncture with me. It's a work of love just to help people. That's really it. That's awesome because when I first started teaching, I was asked to come and teach because the teacher that I was supposed to teach had an emergency and had to go see her mother. And it was three days before the start of the semester. <laughs> and they asked me to come and teach. I know. And I had never taught, right? They're like, you, can you come and help? And I'm like, I'm not a teacher. I don't. They're like, we have nobody. Can you help it? So I said yes because I felt bad because they needed someone. And I remember like you, I... I walked into the classroom and there was 37 people yeah. that stared at me and I felt literally my face turning <gasps> oh, so red, my... like so red. And I'm like, everybody's looking at me and they all know that I don't know what I'm going to talk about, that I'm not a teacher, that I suck. It's, it's exactly what it's felt. Was... And right, you know yes. that, right? And everybody's looking at you and that's not what they're thinking. They're thinking, oh, that's a new teacher. Yeah. Okay, well, what is she going to teach us, right? Yeah. But I'm thinking, yes. they're thinking, oh, she knows nothing, this one, right? And I'm thinking, oh my God, my heart rate is, I have palpitation, I have anxiety, my stomach feels like I'm going to throw up. And I remember saying, I I'm here to help out. This is my first time teaching, but I love Chinese medicine. I've been practicing and I, I really love it. So you're welcome to ask questions. I might not know all the answers, but I'll point you in the right direction. And so my first lecture was the yin-yang theory. And what was interesting is the first 10 minutes were horrible. <laughs> and then I got my group yes. because just like you, I love to talk about Chinese mm -hmm. medicine. I love to share the, the intricacy, the amazing way. It's just such an amazing medicine and the way it all falls into place yes. is so beautiful. It's a beautiful medicine. Once I started talking and I'm like you, I know people think I'm young and extroverted. If we compare you and me, I'm definitely more young than you are in energy, but I'm like you. If I go in a room with a bunch of people, I'm quiet and I'm not saying anything. I am more yin, but I'm probably more young than you in general. And so I got in my groove because it was so much fun. And then I talked for three hours because it was a wow. three hour class. They had questions and some of the questions I could answer. Some of them I'm like, you know what? I'll go find out and I'll tell you on Thursday because I was teaching twice a week. And... I remember coming home, and this was a late evening class. Well, I finished at nine. So by the time I got home, I walked through the door and I said to my husband, this was so amazing. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. And he's like, really? You were so nervous. I'm like, I know, but then it was so amazing. They really had questions. They were excited. They wanted to learn. Yeah. It was just like so much fun. And I discovered a passion for sharing the medicine and teaching. So I totally get where you're coming from. And so it feeds my energy to have people wanting to learn because you can talk about TCM to your family and friends. After a while, they're not interested. They, it might not be their favorite subject. While you have 30 plus people looking at you with eagerness to learn, yeah. it's like fantastic. That's exactly what it is. My experience was very similar when I started to teach. It's like that their eyes are looking at you. I had that ex in exact, like I was, oh my God, I can't believe you also felt that way. But that exact imposter syndrome of just, they know I don't know what I'm talking about. They're going to think I don't know anything. You just go into it with an open heart, right? And they're eager to learn as well. Early on in my career, a physical therapy mentor thought to me, he was saying, your patient doesn't care about how much you know until mm -hmm. they know how much you care. You know the exercises for this and that, blah, blah, blah. They don't care. 
right? They they want to yeah. know that you care about them. You want to get them out of pain. You want to get them better and stronger so they can go back to doing what they want to do. They just want to know how much you care about them. And then through your care, you can give them the care that they need and they can recover. That's really the, the big thing. I love that. Your patient doesn't care how much you know yeah. until they know how much you care about yeah. them. Yeah. So that's a great quote. That's another thing that I love about when I watch you on YouTube. When you are on YouTube, you're sharing your podcast, but it's a video of you, obviously. And often you start with a quote. Mm. So mm. you like to be inspired. So where do you reach for those quotes? Do you read a lot of books? What inspires you to want to put some quotes? And I understand why, because obviously you want to inspire people. So you start with something inspiring. So I like it. But why did you decide to do that? Every once in a while, we really need some motivation, right? Sometimes we are studying and it just feels like it's never going to end. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. Oh my God, like the board exams are the monster that's going to get us at the end. Academic school is hard enough. And you're dealing with so many different things. A lot of acupuncture schools, at least in the States anyway, for the students, it's like they're either second career, third career, or something like that. They're currently working and they have to go to school in addition to working or raise a family, et cetera. So then it's like, when do you get taken care of, right? It's when we treat each other, that's like heaven because, wow, I finally get to lay down. Someone's taking care of me, et cetera. And so when I try to just put like a quote in the front, it's just to sort of bring a little tender, loving care to people and like motivate them a little bit. Because like, I mean, how often are we are we doing that for each other, right? So that's sort of why I started to just do the little motivational things. I get them from books. I try to read as many books as I can, but nowadays it's really audiobooks. If I'm like on the treadmill, it's an audiobook versus reading. That's why I listen to podcasts yeah. because that's exactly why. Because then you can listen to them while you're doing something else. If I'm going running with my dog or like you said, if I'm doing things like cleaning the house, then it's great to have a podcast in the back or an audio book. Right. Since I started the podcast in January 2024, so this is this the first year and I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I was just like, oh, I don't know if I should for, for many reasons. One of them was can people, because now it's just audio, there's nothing to watch. So it, are people going to be able to understand the French accent? The second thing was like, who am I to start a podcast? Again, the imposter syndrome always shows up. That's just normal, obviously, in the end. And then also, do I have enough time? Because it takes a lot of time, as you know, to have a podcast. How do you manage being a papa of two kids, having a practice, having a podcast, and putting that podcast on YouTube and doing clips on Instagram? How do I manage it? I honestly feel like I don't. Honestly, I, I feel like I'm not managing well. I'm trying my best, right? I'm trying, I can try my best. And I try to put a process in place for my week. But even though you put a plan in place, right? Things can fall apart. Child gets sick. They woke up at two in the morning. You were supposed to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. Now you're in their room until four in the morning. And you're like, okay, half an hour until I'm supposed to work on, you know, my topic calendar. Uh, and then you just fall asleep on the floor and then you wake up and then now everything's delayed a day, right? It's just like you can have a plan, but sometimes life gets in the way. I just try to have as much of a plan as possible, you know, with a weekly planner and a daily planner. That's something I pull just from, I mean, being a physical therapist and an acupuncturist. We have long-term goals for our patients. We have short-term goals for our patients. So then same thing for us. If I want to get my topic calendar out and I, I do solo podcasts, right? It's just me talking because I think that's just the introvert part. I'm deathly afraid to talk to people sometimes. I take recommendations from the comments, so I have a whole list of that. And then I'll have a bullet points of what I'm going to talk about on the podcast. I'll schedule in the recording sessions for that. And I have to give myself some forgiveness when things don't go my way. Sometimes I get frustrated. It bleeds into other parts of my life if I don't get that one thing that I wanted to do for the day. And then I have to do all the other responsibilities that I have, which I think probably echoes with a lot of different people. Did you know I created three books to support your TCM journey? Often I'm asked, Clara, what's the difference between all three? Well, they all have fun, colorful visual to make them much more easy to grasp and understand each concept. They're definitely not your TCM typical boring dry books. They are available in hard copy and they ship all over the world. But if you'd rather the digital version, they all come with video links to complement them and can be downloaded on any device. My first book, Acupoint Made Easy, this is the orange one, covers all acupuncture points function, location, depth and angle of insertion, including special points, categories, 
extra point cupping moxa, and all my clinical pearls. My second book, Chinese Medicine Made Easy, which is my green book, covers all TCM foundation, diagnosis, yes, including tongue and pulse, with lots of colorful visual to help you grasp specifically observation, right? Case studies and my digital fillable intake form for you to use with your patients. My third book, Chinese Medicine Treatments Made Easy, that's my purple book, covers all TCM treatments for 160 syndromes, including acupuncture points, herbal formulas, diet, ear acupuncture, and many other TCM tools. So you can have that book at your fingertips every day in clinic. It is a must for all practitioners. I provide sample for each of my books that you can download to see if this is really truly what you were looking for, because I want you to be happy with what you're investing in when you invest in any of my products. You can check out the links to all my books in the show notes below, or go to my website, acuproacademy.com, and on the menu tab, click the shop tab and get your copy today. I think it's good because I know you put lots of pressure on yourself. That's who you are. You're dedicated and you want to help people and that's how you put self-pressure. So I'm going to go in there and make your baby uncomfortable, okay. but I think it's always good for us to be uncomfortable. When you were saying I usually do a solo podcast, for me, the interview is the hardest part as well because I want to make sure that the guest is mm -hmm. bringing the best to everyone and giving the best to everyone. But I want to also make sure that they're enjoying their time right. and that I'm asking questions that are really going to bring the best out of every guest. And I, I don't have the background for it. I'm learning as I go. And the more guests I have, the more I'm learning. And I'm like, oh, I should have said that. or oh, I should have done that. We can always reflect later. And that's how we learn and we grow and we get better. So my question to you is, if because you were public about it, that's why obviously I'm going to talk about it. But a few weeks ago, you had a really big vulnerable moment that you shared online about just exactly this. Should I continue this? I'm kind of feeling like, what's the point kind of thing. And I think it's obviously that space where you feel very overwhelmed. So can you talk about what happened there? I try to track my own progress, right? You measure what matters. And I think I was tracking just silly things, whether it's like follower count or view or retention of your YouTube metrics or your podcast metrics, et cetera. I'm looking at different people in the YouTube space, different people podcast space, you as well. Like I, I'm very motivated by you and everything that you do. I'm thinking that I'm going to start doing some guests just because I did two episodes of guests and I edit everything myself. So editing it, getting the pauses out, was just, it just took so long, right? It was like an hour and a half of footage. I had to get it down to 30, 45 minutes. So it was very difficult for me with that kind of lift. But now that you've introduced me to this software, I might try to use it. But even in the prep of this, you're amazing. I mean, it feels like you've been doing this forever. Like you sent the prep email, the reminder email, the tips. And I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> it's, it's just amazing. As I was looking at like different analytics, I started to go down the rabbit hole of seeing other people in the space. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm against giants. Literally, I'm against giants. So what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What's the point? I don't get any revenue from this, right? I have sponsorships that don't really net me anything, right? I was like, why am I doing this? I've been just paying for this and for what, right? I mean, I didn't do it for that. I didn't think about it like, oh, I want to make money from this. But now I'm, it's now I have kids. So, you know, paying for school, all these things add up over time. And I was like, should I just keep doing this? Like, why am I even doing this? I had that long, hard talk with my wife. We talk about finances too. We want to make sure that as a family, we're making progress, right? So that we can save up for our kids' college. We want to progress in our house life. Like we want to uh, have a bigger house for them, you know, so they have a backyard to play in and all that stuff, right? Everything is really for them. When I was like really just in that dark place of like, I should just stop this. Like, why am I doing this? Who would even care if I stopped? No one would care. They have Clara. They have Nick, they have Linda Morse, they have HP Kim, they have all these people. It's all good. Just let them do it. I had to really dig deep and have that conversation with my wife. She really helped me a lot. She said, there's so many different restaurants out there too, right? Every one of those restaurants, they get reservations. Some people may have a taste for salad tonight. Some of them may have a taste for pasta, right? And so it's not like, oh, okay, there's already so many restaurants don't open anymore. Up. No, people still open them up. So that helped me. And then after I released that, I was like, let me release. I, I don't know if I should even talk about this, but people really responded positively 
and gave me that motivation and that love that I needed again. And then you also seeing me during that time, it, it may not have meant a lot to you, but it meant uh, the world to me where it was like some, something I really needed at that moment. Other people in the space, they're just celebrities to me, really. So it's like, you guys are doing your thing, right? And then I'm here by myself, little tiny guy, trying to edit something, make it look really nice, make it look really cool. And then it's like, oh, hey, she shared my thing. No way. She saw me. Me? No way. That really helped me. I thanked you for that one, you know, via our personal direct message. But I'll thank you again here for everything that you're doing for the community and making acupuncture as easy to learn as possible. I am a student of yours in a way through your books and through your videos and I learned a lot. I mean, and a lot of the teaching style that I have where I try to just make it as easy as possible, you know, some of that I also owe to you as well. So thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I have to say, first of all, you started in 2019, 2020. So let's say four years plus ago. You have to remember that, first of all, I don't have kids. My time is a little bit different than yours. We're all different. And when you say giant, it's not giant. It's just the fact that I started before you. So I had an advantage. You know, when you run a race, if I'm already a kilometer ahead, it's going to be hard for you to catch up unless you're such a freaking <laughs> fast runner. But if I'm already ahead, you're like, well, that's a disadvantage, right? She was already ahead. You have to remember that the metrics, of course, keeps us going. But for me, the metrics is not the numbers. It's more the engagement, mm -hmm. right? So if people engage and they comment or they ask for things, that to me says, okay, they really are in it. And when you have a hundred people watching your YouTube video, 10 people watching your YouTube mm -hmm. video, a thousand views, so let's say a thousand people watching your videos, imagine if you were in a room and there was a hundred people watching you teach, you'd be like, holy crap, there's a hundred people in front of me. And then suddenly there'd be a thousand and you'd be in this room teaching and you would go, there's a thousand people listening to me. But because we watch those things and we're like, oh, this person is 10,000 or 20,000 or whatever the number is, we feel like, well, that's not a lot, but those are real people. That's a lot of people, right? So that's the first thing to think about. The second thing is if you pull out a video and a thousand people watch it, they appreciated it or whatnot, but two people in there, you literally changed the way they were thinking. You taught them something that changed and turned things around, then you did your job. Doesn't matter if it didn't apply to everyone. You changed the life of two people. When you are nice to people in the street or you smile at people and then they smile back and you might have made their day. One time I was having a really, really bad day years, years ago, and I was walking my dog in the forest and I was crying because right? there's not many people. I was having such a hard time. And this person came on the opposite direction with her dog and she stopped and she goes, let me give you a hug. I don't know this person. She hugged me and literally when she left, I felt so much better. Wow. And that was a complete stranger, but she changed my day wow. without knowing that after I felt so much better, I stopped crying. I thought about the whole situation and then I fixed it. And that one person decided to change one person's day. And you're doing this every day when you are online. That's what you're doing. So I'm the same as your wife for the fact that everybody is different. I come from a small town in the Alps and it's French. So French people love their bakeries. It's all about bread and baguette and bakeries, right? My hometown is about 2,000 people. There's seven bakeries for 2,000 people, seven. And all of them are different. Mm -hmm. One yeah. makes the best baguette. One makes the best croissant. One makes the best pastry. One makes the best chocolate. You know what I mean? Growing up, I used to go buy a baguette in one, but buy the pastry in another mm. one because I didn't like either on the opposite, right? Your gift is who you are. And people come and listen to you because they love how calm you are, how collected, how you explain things in a calm way that resonates with them. And you're very clear and concise in the way you teach. So it doesn't matter where you at compared to somebody else is you are helping people and they are like they reached out when you were vulnerable they're like oh my god please don't quit i love what you're doing you're so useful and we all have vulnerable moments i had one too because once you're online that happens all the time i had one recently where someone was really really aggressively very mean and said horrible things to me and just <laughs> did like you i was like i don't want to be online yeah. anymore this is horrible why are people mean i started crying and but you have to always remember, and you did that, you had your moment, and then you did that, and you remember that you are out there to help people. And that's what's key. And the second thing I wanted to say is I'm really happy you shared the finance. 
because I think people forget. They think that we make videos, we put them online, and it costs us just time. First of all, time is a lot and it's worth a yes. lot because it's our time. So when I make a video, let's say, or this podcast, and because it's a video podcast, the whole thing's going to take about eight to 10 hours between editing, doing all the writing, uploading it to you know the podcast area, uploading it to YouTube, putting the hashtags, doing the thumbnail, all this, yeah. this stuff, preparation, like you said, yeah. takes hours. People have no idea. They think, oh, it's 30 minutes. So it took 30 minutes, <laughs> right? Yeah. But no, 30 minutes took 10 hours. Not only that, but it costs money. It costs money to have hosting everything. Like if you host a podcast, you have to pay to host right. it. If you have any kind of software to help you, you have to pay for it. All those things, the mic we're using today, you and I know because we have the same mic, yeah. those are expensive right. mic, yeah. right? So we have better sound. So people don't know that we spend a lot of money as well doing this because we're passionate and we want to help people. And so I think it's great that you mentioned that because you have such a good heart and I don't want you to quit unless you lose your passion. If you're not passionate, then it's fine to walk away. But if you still want to help people and you're passionate about it, then I want you to continue because you are helping people every single day, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I still have the passion, <laughs> right? Even when I'm wor working with patients and I have a student or something, I love teaching in that moment. I like treating patients myself, but I love when I have a student there and just teaching too. So I feel like it, it is like a passion to teach, right? And so... With that, there's direct feedback. I see, oh, they get it. Okay. When you said it this way, they didn't really respond to you. What you said to me in direct message too, it helped a lot because yes, as long as one person's life is changed or if they're engaging, if they're like commenting and someone's listening, someone's reading this and they're actually saying, hey, this is cool. Can you do this too? And I'm like, oh, that's what I look for. And yeah, I appreciate you saying that. I have the goosebumps <laughs> now. <laughs> You know, and it's interesting because online sometimes I'm much older than you could be a mom, but <laughs> I, I grew up where you had to be polite, right? You were raised to be polite. I'm sure your parents did that with you too. And so online, that kind of goes out the door and I still have a hard time with that. So for example, there'll be people that say, oh, thank you very much. Could you also do this on that? I love it. But then I'll have people that say, do this, give me this, mm -hmm. do that. And I'm like, are you demanding? Like... Could you be nice about yeah. it? And I have a really hard time. My husband's like, well, the tone is not mean. You're hearing it mean. Mm -hmm. You're hearing like, do this, give me this, give me that. They're not demanding. They're just shortening things because it takes too long to say, yeah. thank you, could you please? Yes. And I have such a hard time with that because I'm like, could you ask nicely? I'm thinking in my mm -hmm. head, right? That would be so much nicer. And it would make me want to help you more <laughs> than if you, it feels like the writing you're demanding. Do you feel that or is oh, it at all? I, I, I try to read the comments and understand what people want, et cetera. And sometimes when I get to such a negative comment or I perceive it as negative, like I recently got one where it's like, oh, this is just your head talking to a microphone. It'd be better if you gave me a picture. And I was like, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I, I, I will put more pictures next time. <laughs> Maybe I'm just reading it that way. But... <laughs> <laughs> One time someone said, I like your video, but can you lose the French accent? Oh my goodness. <laughs> how, how am I going to do no, that? Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's how much. <laughs> it's, it's the same with you. It'd be better. And I'm like, you know how much work we put yeah, into this? Yeah. Just be grateful. Yeah. And if it's not for you, there's yeah. a little thing yeah. over there that I can yeah. swipe yeah. very yeah. quickly. Yeah. But that's yeah. awesome. You're, so yeah, you, the hard part is you can't hear the tone. Yeah. That's the hard yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. And it's like you spend so long, you you you, you edit, you rewatch the same part over and over again, et cetera. And then sometimes it takes that one second of that person commenting like, oh, my goodness, I guess I did it wrong. But you didn't do it wrong. Uh, I have a friend who says to me, people that are going to comment positive things, that's great. Ask questions, that's great. People that are commenting negative because they're not doing a podcast, they're not doing videos, they're not doing any of the work that you are putting or I'm putting out but they're not feeling good in their life. Mm. They're stressed, they're unhappy, they're angry or fearful or sad or whatever it is. And this is a great outlet is to go and letting out all your emotion. And so it's hard to take it that way. But when you think about it, you're like, okay, I feel for you. Sorry, that's too bad that you're not happy. Right. And then when I look at it from that perspective, then I can move forward. But yeah, you have to kind of have a little bit of a self-preservation little barrier yes. when you're online yes. for sure. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yep. Agree completely. 
But I definitely <clears throat> want you to continue to do what you're doing because that's fantastic. You know, a lot of people, even in our industry as practitioners, see other people as competition. I never, ever believe in competition. Yeah. If I'm in my town practicing and there's 10 other acupuncturists, to me, that's fantastic. Yes. I may be very good when it comes to women's health. You may be really good when it comes to pain, chronic pain, acute pain. The other person may be really good with dermatology and skin, which I'm not good at. So we all bring our knowledge and who we are and our gift to each of the patients that come and decide to come and see you. And I have to say for me and my practice has been since 2003, I always say that patients come and see you to help them, right? Obviously but they stay and come back and promote your services to other people because of who you are. That makes sense. Right? Yeah. Because they connect with right. you. And so online is the same thing. There's no competition. We're all trying to help students, practitioners, people, because when I was in school, there was nobody and I felt very lonely. There was nothing, there was books, but there was nothing to support us. And it was hard, like you said, to be in school. There was a completely new language. It was all this information at once that didn't make any sense at all to me at first. And so, there was no support. So we are here to give support to people and they are so grateful and they don't always have the time to say it, but I know they are. Yeah. So please, please, my friend, continue to do what you're doing because you are bringing a lot to this community. Thank so, you. And you always have such a good, sweet smile. <laughs> like yeah. you're very calm smile. <laughs> <laughs> you try to be as calm as possible. I mean, that's just my personality, I think. I'm very relaxed about things. I really <clears throat> appreciate you coming. Richard finally <laughs> made it to the podcast. <laughs> and I love to meet people online and see what they're doing. And we met online. We haven't met in real life, but maybe one Hopefully. day. We will. I really appreciate you coming in. Any last thought you want to share with students who are studying that you really wanted one more nuggets to give them that feels from the heart? The quote I always share is that even little things add up over time. Right. So I think a quote that's a lot of people see me is, especially if they have followed me from the beginning, is that success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. When I was studying, looking at one flashcard. Okay. I looked at the flashcard. I'm good. Let's go to sleep. So success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. That is a great quote because it's true. It's little steps. Every journey starts with one step and every journey of a thousand steps starts with one. When I started writing the first book, Acupoint Made Easy, I never thought I would write a book, but people kept saying, why don't you do a book? Why don't you do a book? And I remember thinking there's 360 plus acupuncture points. This is going to take me like 20 years to create this, right? And then I just thought, okay, like exactly what you did. I'm like, I'm just going to do one per day. Wow. You know, and it was, and so it took me about a year and a half, almost two years to do it because there was days where I did not, but there were days where I did two at the time, but I was like, I'm just going to do one per day. And then eventually suddenly you have all of them and you, you can't believe that, I love that this made this book made. Right. I so I like that you share that because everything is about little steps, adding and adding and adding until you get the whole thing. Cause when you look at the whole thing at the finished product, you're like, it's impossible. I can't do this. It's just, it feels like this massive mountain. But every mountain we climb, I love to climb and hike. You take a few steps and another step and another step. Eventually you're at the top and you're like, oh, I made it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. anybody that want to check out Richard, if you don't know him yet, definitely check him out. It's Study Acupuncture With Me podcast, YouTube, Instagram. He is fantastic. He's got lots of nuggets and he's very calm about it which really calms me is yin and his <laughs> calmness really makes me happy. So thank you so much. Richard, thank you for so coming much. Today. Thank that. you for having me. This was amazing, amazing experience. Thank you for everything you're doing for the community. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I truly hope you benefited from this episode and I would love for you to share it with a friend that may benefit from it as well. Follow the show, leave a review. And if you want more, Go to my website, acuporacademy.com. I have tons of resources there with treatment protocols, case studies, free courses, and so much more. And connect with me on all social media at Acupro Academy. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, Pinterest, and LinkedIn and TikTok. <laughs> and no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM. Please listen to the disclaimer. 
because the AccuPro Show podcast and material shared through AccuPro Academy, which is a subdivision of Natural Health Sense Incorporated, are designed solely for educational and entertainment purposes. The utilization of information from this podcast or any associated material is at the user's discretion and risk. This content is not meant to replace the guidance of an acupuncturist, Chinese medicine doctor, medical doctor, physician, or any qualified professional, nor is it a substitute for proper diagnosis or treatment. Users are strongly advised not to ignore or postpone seeking medical advice for any existing medical condition with their healthcare professional regarding any health concerns.